Canon versus Sony. We recently upgraded to a new camera to shoot some 4K video here on Think Media, but have we left Canon altogether and what's in my camera bag now? I'm gonna be talking about that in this video. Coming up. Hey, what's up guys, Sean here with Think Media, bringing you the best tips and tools for building your influence with online video. And on this channel, we do tech gear reviews as well as tips and strategy videos. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. And hey, at any point during the video, check out show notes and links in the YouTube description below. I'll put a complete summary of all the gear mentioned and anything else I forgot. Let's jump into the video. So we recently upgraded some gear here at Think Media to this setup right here. The reason we wanted to do that is because um, we do a big tech show every year here in Vegas, the NAB Tech Show, and we wanted to get some new features so that the content, about 25 videos that we shot out of that event, could kind of be brought up to the next level. Now, the main piece of kit is a Sony camera that we upgraded to, and if you've been watching Think Media for very long, then you know that I've really been a Canon user for years and that I love Canon and I still do and I'll talk about some of the differences in this video um, but also break down why we went with this camera and talk about this whole setup. So first of all let's talk about the camera. This is a Sony A6500 and the reason we went with this camera is a couple things. The first was 4K. Wanting to go to 4K and have all of our videos out of NAB and for the future, most of our videos here on Think Media being in 4K, we needed a solid 4K camera. And the nice thing about the A6500 is it doesn't break the bank. At the time of watching this video, it's about a $1,200 camera. And so it's definitely an investment, but that's pretty affordable considering 4K and all the, the of the performance that you get. The second reason is low light. And one of the other cameras we were comparing this with was the uh, Panasonic GH5, which is also a great camera. We're gonna be doing some future content on this channel with that camera. But because of the sensor size, we wanted to go with one that has great low light, especially knowing that shooting inside of a convention like NAB is pretty low light. Even though we have light with us, there's a lot of darker situations, and so we wanted the benefit of a larger sensor than micro four thirds. The next reason that we upgraded to this camera was just because of its size. As you can see, uh, once we build out the kit, still kind of a, a bigger setup, but not really. For what you're getting, this is a pretty nimble, portable, relatively light setup for how much performance that you get out of it. And so another thing that's nice about the A6500 is that it's a mirrorless camera that also when taken off of this setup is extremely portable and extremely great for travel or shooting any kind of content on the go. The next reason why we wanted to grab this camera was because of killer autofocus. Now, what people definitely know in the industry is that Canon and Sony are leading as far as continuous autofocus during video. And so going into a shoot where we wanted to just be able to run and gun, be able to tap the screen, uh, which is another cool thing about this particular camera, is one of the first cameras that Sony added touchscreen ability to. So you could tap areas uh, for focus and things like that. And so we wanted it just really easy, the ability to pump out a lot of rapid fire content, tack sharp autofocus the whole time with Sony's autofocus uh, phase system was a huge benefit of this camera. Next up is frame rates. And one of the cool things about having various frame rates on the Sony a6500 is the ability for slow motion. Now that wasn't really something we wanted to focus on for NAB. That was pretty straightforward, highlighting products, you know, doing content at booths but knowing that the, cam uh, the camera would be future-proof for other projects. One of the things that I love looking for in cameras these days is the ability to do slow motion, and we even use that at uh, a ClamorCon shoot that we recently did for video influencers. And so I'm always looking for the ability to also use cameras for multiple purposes, and having all those slow motion options is a great benefit. Additionally, one of the super cool things about a lot of new cameras coming out is in-body image stabilization. Now what this means is that inside of the camera itself, they've installed essentially motors that work on like five axis to give you smooth, 
um, handheld footage. And so even when it's taken off of stabilization like this monopod, you can get really smooth B-roll footage um, and it makes it a lot more nimble for just taking shake out of footage in general. So another feature that stood out to us when we were thinking about the upgrade. Okay, so that was some of the things that went into making the decision to pick out this camera for the upgrade. But now let me just talk about some of the kit here as far as what was in our bag for NAB. And this is kind of our new uh, what's in my camera bag set up for like live events, for run and gun, for maybe shooting interviews, for shooting content at conferences, at events, and things like that. And so we talked about the camera as being the A6500. And then the next thing that you see here is a Beach Tech DXA Micro Pro. Now I won't go too much into depth on this, but uh, this was a nice piece of kit. We did a video about it, so I'll link that up in the description below. And the main reason we added this was so that we could use the headphone jack to monitor the audio the entire time. Because we're shooting at a live event, um, we wanted to be, make sure that in real time, we could number one, monitor the audio to make sure it sounded great, and number two, that we could um, record the uh, mic from uh, an external microphone directly into the camera so there was no syncing in post. At the beginning of the year, we shot CES and we recorded the audio separately and it just slows down the workflow in post. So this particular piece of kit makes it nice so that you not only know what the audio sounds like in real time, but then editing after the fact is a lot faster because all of the audio is embedded directly in to the camera. And that's again, because the actual Sony a6500 does not have a headphone jack. So you could probably skip past this piece of kit if, if you did have a camera that does have a headphone jack and then uh, you could just monitor it real time. So then for audio, we were using the Sennheiser AVX system. And what was also nice about this uh, setup is it was kind of wireless. Not only is it wireless, but the fact that this XLR receiver can plug straight into the Beach Tech. So it just kind of makes it for a clean, nice setup right there. And this microphone is kind of just a no uh, hassle solution that you can just turn on and it pairs instantly because it's a new digital uh, setup versus analog. Really, uh, just you saw it right there, just paired instantly, uh, green, it synced up, and you're just ready to begin shooting on um, whatever videos you wanna create. And one of the reasons at an event, any kind of events or conferences that we like to go with kind of dynamic microphones and handheld microphones like this is because they do a good job at cutting out noise. A lot of times we'd be in crowds, a lot of times there'd be a lot of background noise, music playing at booths and things like that. And so this made it so that we could get clean audio no matter what the circumstances were um, and even if there was tons of background noise and things like that. For lenses, we shot with a Sony uh, 10 to 18. I personally really like that wide look uh, that is almost kind of fisheye, but gets right to that wide angle look. And I also wanted to get this lens because we a lot of times shoot with a wide angle lens here when creating videos at the um, uh, Think Media Studios here. But the main lens that we used at NAB was a 16 to 35 fixed f.4 lens. And that was a great lens that we invested in mainly so that we could also use it for the future on full frame. And Omar, who you've heard about and seen here a little bit on Think Media, was also shooting with his um, a7R during NAB. And so that lens could work on both cameras. It also, it's a full frame lens that also can work on a crop sensor camera, APS-C, like this one. And so those were our two lenses that gave us like a pretty good range when you could go from 10 to 18, and then you could go from 16 up to 35. For that event, that pretty much covered everything we needed. Now, as far as stabilization goes on this kit, this is a classic Manfrotto monopod. This is the 561 BHDV. I'm not sure if this exact model is still out. I believe it's a newer model now. And this has been just a great uh, faithful monopod for a long time because again, it's very portable, it's very nimble. You can get stable, steady shots. It has a video head on it for panning um, if needed in B-roll and things like that. And also, it just takes the weight off of um, 
trying to hold your gear and carry it around or put like a shoulder rig on or something like that. But yet at the same time, being s smaller than a tripod, right? Trying to set up a tripod a lot of times in crowded environments takes a little more real estate on the ground. And so this allows you to be nimble and just get right into places, even if it's crowded, to get the necessary shot. And one of my favorite pieces of kit to combine with the Manfrotto is uh, the quick release system. And so that's an extra plate that we added on top of here, the 394 qu uh, quick release system. And that way you can just pop the camera on and off, no problem, quick and fast. And then we also um, have this piece. This isn't um, super necessary, but I do like this, this piece of kit in case you wanna get a little bit of elevation on any of the accessories that you add to the, um, the top of the kit. If you wanna get the lighting a little bit higher, angle it down. And then you also could add another receiver or something here if needed. And then the last thing is this ICANN um, LED light. And actually Omar picked this up uh, from the ICANN booth while there. These should be out now and we have a full video on these. Pretty nice. It's a bicolor light, which means you can not just do kind of like an amber uh, sort of nighttime, it would match sort of housing lights, um, but you can also go to that daylight color temperature which is nice, so it gives you the versatile fill light for shooting shots, shooting B-roll, and anything else you need. And uh, this is pretty brand new from ICANN. It's the Onyx line, and is pretty affordable for how quality it is. The build quality on these lights is amazing. Um, they're super dependable so far, and so I've loved this light. So that is our new setup and some of the new gear that is inside of our kit now. And like I said, there's a few videos out on individual um, things that I talked about. So I'll link everything up in the description below. But as far as the Canon versus Sony conversation, you know, <clears throat> the reason that we really went for Sony most of all was 4K. And so um, when it comes to, I think, making that decision, both are still incredible. And we still, I think, media use both, depending on the circumstances and the situation. And probably the biggest standout difference is, is you have to just ask yourself, what is it that you actually need? If you really need 4K video and plan on editing and putting out 4K content, well then you definitely need a camera that can shoot 4K. And so that was the biggest driver of our decision was, hey, if we're gonna make the upgrade, let's do it, let's switch it up to 4K. One, of course, downside too about um, when it comes to the Sony a6500 is that it doesn't give you that flip screen to selfie. And so we also had to kinda, you always have to make potentially compromises, um, but because I was shooting at NAB with a team and had help, I didn't need to see the screen. So saying that, I still think that Canon is really a leader in a few things. I still think that um, one, it's a lot more user friendly. Learning Sony and Sony's workflow, Sony's menus, uh, takes a while and never really becomes the best user experience out there. So I still recommend Canon the most, especially to new creators, people that are just starting out, and actually most people, because most people don't need 4K, aren't gonna edit with it, aren't gonna put anything out with it, so they're good without that. I think, too, um, this, this is a Canon 70D. That selfie screen is pretty important not just for if you would use this for something like vlogging, but for most creators who shoot by themselves. You know, 99% of YouTubers are shooting by themselves, and so you shoot in your home office, your bedroom, wherever, and you wanna just be able to set up the camera and get the great footage. Now, of course, you could always, you know, plug in a monitor and set something else up so that you can monitor what the footage looks like, make sure everything's in focus, but, that is an added step. And so for the practicality of just creating everyday consistent content, Canon is easy to use. You get that brilliant autofocus. It's really to use by easy to use by yourself. And so we still love Canon for a lot of shoots like that. So as far as the future goes, I actually really hope that Canon, when they release a 90D or whatever is next, puts 4K into some of the prosumer 
um, camera models. And I believe that that's coming. I'm still really invested in Canon lenses, as you can see over my shoulder here. You know, Canon has been our workflow for years. I prefer it. I love the color that comes out of uh, Canon cameras. I love the photography that comes out of them. And, and they're great, great cameras. I think there's just a few specs that I would love to see added to some of their models, which would, once again, I think kind of bring them back into leaders in the mirrorless and DSLR video space. Question of the day, are you team Canon? Are you team Sony? Are you team somebody else, Panasonic? Let me know in the comments section below. So thanks so much for checking out this video. Definitely subscribe for more videos just like this. Hit the like button if you got value out of this video. And if you haven't downloaded the Think Media TV Video Gear Buyer's Guide, I actually go through all of my favorite go-to gear for every budget, including lighting, tripods, microphones, things like that. So I'll link that up in the YouTube description below as well as on the YouTube card. Until next time, Think Media TV is bringing you the best tips and tools for building your influence with online video. Keep crushing it and we will talk soon.